online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after-show entertainment. Three, two, three, two, three. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> Oh, Nelly. I tell you, and I mentioned this when we were watching the show together. The last four episodes, the last back episodes have been nothing but amazing. Amazing. And on that note. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. And welcome to season three, episode 12, Victims of Love. Or like I like to call it. The Pit of Broken Marriages, coming to you live from After Buzz TV. <laughs> and I'm Dorinda Barker. This is... Kelly, hi. Hi, Miss Kelly. How are you? Well, Miss JJ is not here uh, today. She will be back. AJ. AJ and JJ. AJ, yeah. We uh, should have a full panel next week. Yes, we will. Ha- and a guest. Ooh, a special guest, but we're not going to tell you. Yeah, we can't now. tell you who it nope. is. But yes, we have a special guest, which is going to be great. So, wow, a lot, huh? Victims of love. Ugh. There was not a lot of love going on in this yeah, episode. Yeah, so I don't know where the victims of <laughs> there this There were a lot love. of victims. Lots of victims. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, lots whoa. of victims. Yeah, and Dally, Dallas really did. Ooh. One of them, I, I think it's really funny that the title of the episode is Victims of Love because a lot of the underlying of this episode is all revenge and pain and people doing what they do out of spite and anger and nothing to do with love. I mean, if you look at every little subplot we watched tonight, I mean, from Cliff to Hunter to Nicholas to, like, all of these things, it's all revenge or payback or debt. It's not, yep. none of it is love. None, no, no, nothing, nothing of this is rooted in no. any kind of love. Nothing. And we start off with Nick and Elena in bed. And I'm sorry, every time I see that... <laughs> I wish if you're if you're listening on iTunes, I wish you could see my face right now because it just annoys the crap out of me. I'm just gonna say it every yeah. time. It's it's just not natural. I'm sorry, folks. But anyway, <laughs> they're in bed, and <laughs> Cliff calls uh, Nicholas to make sure you know because the deal's going down, the IPO is going down the next day. He wants to make sure he's going to get his company. And he wants to talk to Elena. And Elena hasn't been taking his phone calls, supposedly because she left her phone because she was in a hurry. Mm-hmm. So, and he wants to talk to Elena. He put Nicholas puts Elena on the phone. And he wants to know why he's still, still in jail. And so she then tells him that Pamela now has the pardon. And it's up to Pamela. It's not up to her to decide... Because she, she tells him, I told you this was never about revenge. That for everything that you did, it's up to her. It's your daughter's call whether she's going to let set you free, basically, or not. So good luck with that. Yeah, she's like, exactly. She washed her hands of it. So, so swimmingly easy for her to wash her hands of it. Because Bobby told her what was going to happen. Heads are going to roll. He wants more bloodshed. Well, it was such a cop out to me, I think. Oh, because cowardly. It, very cowardly. I mean, if you're going to go, no matter what she wants to say, and, and yes, for deep down to the core, we know that it was, you know, a lot of people pulled, you know, it was, it was Nicholas, it was Cliff, it was these other people that pulled these negative feelings and all this hurt. And I mean, I think Christopher says it best. They used her hurt and her pain. Yeah. And brought this side out in her, but she also has to take responsibility for that. Yes. Like, yes, I get it. It was it was terrible and seeking you know justice as she calls it for her fa- you know for what happened to her family. I completely understand. But watching her reaction and her attitude toward Bobby, especially. And, and the way Carmen is, it's really just annoying me. Because they're yeah. acting like there was no good, you know, that it was, that, that these, that Christopher, like the kids did it. Mm-hmm. And like everybody, just because they were related, they all played, a, a, you know, an equal part in it, which isn't fair. No, it isn't fair because if this is true, but we all know how I feel about this. But if this <laughs> is 
if this is true, this has nothing to do with Bobby. It has nothing to do with Christopher. I mean, yes, they are Ewings. They were born into this family, but they didn't even know that this happened. Well, I mean, if you look at it from the other side, look at what Drew did to Christopher's children. Yes. He didn't hold that against Elena. No. He, he was angry and it took him a minute to deal with it, but they didn't hold it against Carmen and kick her out. Your son's a murderer. Get out of my, you know, you're no longer part of our family. They didn't hold those yep. things against them. That's and I just so find right. it so, you know, interesting, this family that claims to be so good and they're on the other side and they're always kind of the underdog. And, you know, you took this all away from us and we're just good people. And look at the way that they're acting. You know? They're acting the way spoiled children would act. Yeah. And here's the thing about spoiled children. Eventually, they do get their hands slapped. And eventually, they do learn their lesson. Eventually. Eventually. And we have four more episodes to feel that out. <laughs> but it will happen. But so this all happens. Christopher goes to see Carmen at the Omni Hotel. And Carmen's attitude comes out. First of all, I just want to say something. <laughs> now, if Anne is at the, at the Omni... And Carmen's at the Omni. By the way, Carmen's hotel room didn't look as nice. Are you sure she was at the Omni? Because they had the Omni. Did they do it in the Omni? Yeah, they did the Omni. That was, yeah. It didn't look like Maybe Anne's not at the Omni now. (laughs) Or maybe maybe Anne's in the penthouse. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe the Omni's not as nice as we thought it was. But (laughs) I was like, do they see each other in the hallway? Like, that was the first thing I thought about. Okay. But I'm sorry. I digress. And I don't want to get off on a tangent about how Carmen and Anne are having breakfast together. But... (laughs) Because that's what I was thinking. So Carmen and Christopher, there he goes to her and he starts talking to her and he, he approaches her and tells her about the letters about her, the friend that Elena goes to see, mm-hmm. named Joaquin, and said, "Is Nicholas Joaquin?" And she flat out lies to him. Yep. Oh, honey. That's going to bite you in your butt. Well, and I know he knows. Yeah. Like, you can tell he totally knows she's, you know. Yeah. And she lies to him, and she says, Nick would never mislead my family. And right after that, I wrote, (laughs) you are wrong, (laughs) Lauren. You are wrong. No, he is definitely misleading your family. Worse than the Ewings have ever misled your family. Oh, yeah. Ever, ever, ever. And, you know, it's... He killed her son. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait till you... Wait till you find that one out. Huh. Nick, you won't mislead your family. Like, that's just the he's way just going to get you all killed. That's all. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And, you know, he's the holy diaphragm. Hashtag holy diaphragm. <laughs> he's the one who created that. Now you're going to have little Joaquin's walking around. <laughs> or maybe John Ross is. But anyway. Oh, that's right. <laughs> there you go. So then that happens. John Ross winds up at Cal's house. Of course, just as Bobby predicted. Yeah, for his grandson's wedding, shows up. Grandson's uh, birthday. Birthday party. (laughs) Grandson's six, get married. (laughs) Sorry, folks. Anyway, so John Ross shows up there and does exactly what Bobby told Cal was going to happen. He offered him $10 million. In cash. I was... You know, people, if someone offered me $10 million, <laughs> I would really seriously think about it. I would. Maybe $100 nowadays. But $10 million, I would, I would go, Ugh. One of my favorite lines that he says is when he's talking to Cal, he starts, you know, of course, the whole blackmail, which is his yeah. forte, brings up, like, all the debt that he's in. And, you know, he can set his family for life. And he tells him, you know, like my dad always said, that there's good in the worst of us and there's bad in the best of us. That was a great line. I'm mm-hmm. so happy that you wrote that down because I didn't. And he's so right, though. Yeah, he's like, I'm hope that I'm hoping that your greed will, get, you know, kind of get the get the best of you to help you like take this deal. Yeah, because he did say because he goes, what did Cal say? Oh, so I'm sure you looked me up. He goes, I looked you up, and you're a good man. Yeah. Except for a couple business ventures that you've done in the mortgage in mortgages, but other than that, you're a good man. And that's when he comes up mm-hmm. with that and. I, I thought, wow, that's pretty poignant. I really yeah. like I really liked it. And John Ross, and we were just talking about this, and we're going to get into Judith later because you know how much we love <laughs> Judith on this show. But they really do hand out the best lines to the two of them because they deliver them so well. They're the best singers ever. Yeah. They really do. So then Cliff keeps calling Pamela now that she knows that Pamela has the pardon to get, mm-hmm. let him out of jail. 
with that being said, Pamela's at the house. At Sue Ellen's. At Sue Ellen's she house. Sue yeah, she's still at interesting. Yeah. After everything that's happened, she's still. So, which leads me to believe that she's still holding on to something. Because why would you stay? Well, you know, first of all, Pamela doesn't have any family. And so Sue Ellen kind of took her under her wing because she's never really had. And she sees Pamela as a young her. Right. So I I can see why, you know. Here's the thing. These people have money. Go out and get your own house. But anyway, (laughs) but she's with. But this wouldn't that wouldn't make into the storyline. It makes sense that it's better for them all just to be together. More drama happens that way. So Pamela and Sumalan are talking, and Pamela's contemplating letting her father out. And then she talks about, well, he did kill my babies. He did set that rig. But then Sue Ellen's like, well, this is your father and you'll have a chance to have a relationship with him if you want. And she goes on about it. And then JR is uh, not JR. Sue Ellen talks about JR. Well, I like that she tells her the thing that was the most <clears throat> basically the worst part about all of this for Sue Ellen was that she didn't have a chance to confront JR and ask him why he thought he was so entitled to set all of this up without including anyone with basically he kind of let their lives fall where they are right now and he made the decision to yep. do that without any input from anyone and that's what she's angry about is who makes you who do you think you are to be able to dictate our lives that way and now she has no way to confront him no way to ask him no way to talk about it yep. and i like that that's what she was telling pamela now here's your chance go figure it out yeah. Because Pamela's going back. Yes, he didn't commit the crime that he's in prison for, but he did these other things. Does that still make it right for him to be in there for something he didn't do? True. And that is still her father. And, I mean, he did do horrible things to her. And he made her have that, you know, relationship yeah. with the guy that was pretending to be her brother and, you know, to kind of infiltrate Christopher and all of these things that she's been, you know, just basically pining after him to love her all she wanted was a father yeah and she finally comes to terms with that and goes to visit him in prison sits down with him it was it was it was beautiful it was i thought it was great and when she handed him the paper i thought it was the pardon and i I thought for a minute that oh she's gonna give it yeah you know that it that but she gives him the deed to the land that elena had given her his father's land and i love what she says to him she says, I wrote did it write down. down. I did write it down. A call to tell them. Da, 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 da. Hold on one second. Because it's great. Hold yeah. On. She goes to see and she shows him the digger's deed. Mm-hmm. And she goes, this is what robbed you of a father mm-hmm. and robbed me of mine. Yep. And I was, I, I was like, awesome. And what? he's trying to apologize. And I'm sorry for what I did. And I like that she says, now here, this is, you know, I've avenged what you, what, you, what was wrong of your father. Mm-hmm. And then also I've avenged what was what my father did to me. Yes. And she leaves. She leaves him there. She leaves, folks. And she, he's shocked. I think he's shocked, too. I thought he was going to, he thought he was going to be able to talk her out of it. But I, you know what I think what got her is when he said, we can start, we can get the company back That's together. That's what he always did to Because it was never about her. At the end of the day, it was always the company. If he would have not ever mentioned the company, I think it might have turned. But the moment he mentioned the company, you just saw her go, well, he's staying. She gave him the deed right after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one thing he always did to her. He, he, he all these false wees. And it was never really that. And yeah. she says, all I ever wanted was your love. And if you really loved me, if you really wanted to protect me, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have done what you did. You wouldn't have risked my life for your yep. own agenda. Bottom line. Yeah. It's, and it is, it is the bottom line. It's yep. pretty simple. So after that, uh, well, not after that, because we we fast forward to that, but it made sense mm-hmm. to put that all together. Ryland is, and the CIA agent, I can't remember his name. Is it awful? But he's a cute CIA agent. He's very cute. Yes. Agent. And they're having a conversation about what's going down because the CIA agent is like, so now your daughter has now made a deal with the cartel, cartel to basically double... The amount of drugs. Yeah. In and out. Yeah. 
the du- <laughs> yes, sorry about that, folks. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and double what is coming in and out of it's going into me- it's coming out of Mexico. What right? they're laundering, yeah, yeah the, what the, what, yeah. what they're you know the drugs that they're laundering and the money whatever they're doing with the, with these trucks, the Ryland Transport trucks. They want double the trucks, double the product, you know, to be able to move stuff faster, which is going to push up their timeline to take over the Mexican government. Yes, and the CIA agent is like, okay, we get in bed, you know, we let you do this. This guy gains power faster, yeah, and he's boiling families in acid. You know, in front of each other, it's, we really want this guy controlling the Mexican government. Exactly, because that's what he goes, and that's what we want. Yeah, and he's like, "Sorry, you're gonna have to figure it out, make a new deal, and protect your daughter yourself." There's something I can do. And no one's ever seen this guy. Right. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. No one has ever seen it. Ryland says, "You stop my trucks, they kill my daughter," and he's basically like, eh, "Whatever," but we're not fixed. You knew the deal. Your daughter decided she was going to go do something else. So let's figure this out. Yep. With that, Emma and Anne, are, Anne goes to see Emma. Yeah. And at this, at this, I thought that was a very nice interaction with the two. but Which was good to see. It was. But a part of me was wondering if, if Emma was really genuine. Like, you know, it, it really yeah. seemed to be and she was playing it well. But just knowing her character and how, you know, manipulative she is, I was just I was still a little I don't know if I trust you. I you know when I thought it was a softball, you know, it was a lob. They mm-hmm. lobbed in that little softball for you mm-hmm. only to set you up for what's about right. to happen. Of how that made sense. Yeah. For them to beat together. yeah. Because here's the deal. Last week is what is she doing here yeah. to Hey, what's up? What's going on? I hate my dad. For what like, he did, did, you, did you come to tell me that you work for the FBI? <laughs> exactly. That was good too. I like yeah. that. She had she had a good liner there, and now that she and then she goes well, she blames Rylan for Drew's death, which we all knew that that was going to happen because of everything, and you know she still feels because of what happened that she wasn't with the person who really cared and who knew how things would have turned out between them and for her. And now she's like, now I have to forgive him for working with the CIA and stopping a war. Like yeah. she said that. So now, now because he's working with the CIA, I have to forgive him. No, well, and I like doesn't... Anne's answer too. She said, you know, no, finding out he's not a monster just makes you hate him more. Yeah. Which is very true. Cause you know, how can you do all of these bad things and then, you know, the one good thing that you're trying to do, I'm supposed to overlook all the bad that you've done. Exactly. So then we find out Judith's coming back. Judith is coming back. And Anne is warning Emma. I love Judith. Don't you tell Judith about the CIA. (laughs) She goes, Anne wants her to keep quiet because if if they tell Judith, it's all going to go crazy town. Yeah. And she, A, Number one, I think this is Rylan's way of trying to get out from under his mother. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Because I think along with screwing the cartel, he's going to screw his mother over, or at least try. Right. But I also think Judith is too smart for this. But something's going to happen. And so she's coming back into town to figure this all out. Well, with all that being said. <laughs> with all of that happening, we we go back to the Ewings. Yes, yes. Cal, the um, IPO manager, calls Bobby, tells him about John Ross's offer to to bribe him, tells him that he, you know, makes him believe that he takes the bait. He's not mm-hmm. going to do it. As he's finished, you know, tells him everything's going to be fine. You guys will be fine in the morning. Um, Bobby calls him in the morning because Carlos Del Sol calls him and tells him about Joaquin. Yes. So they start putting two and two together. They figure out that Joaquin still has bank accounts and they figure out that um, Nicholas owes the cartel over six hundred million dollars. Yeah, for a bad investment deal. Right. So they put all these puzzle pieces together. Obviously, they have no proof to yeah. do anything. They figure that's where. Um, so they're trying to stop the sale of these shares, or trying to hold. You know, trying to tell Cal that Nicholas is working is not working yeah. for Cliff. So they get him on the phone, and before the call is finished, in comes what was the name Vincent. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wrote it down. Deloria. Yes. Uh, Victor. Victor, sorry. Victor. Deloria. Victor that we saw in last week's episode at the end, the sexy Max Ryan comes in. Oh, he's so good. <laughs> hangs up the phone, fires poor Cal, takes his phone, can't get anywhere, and then Nicholas is right behind him with Elena's phone in his hand as Christopher's trying to call and warn her. Creepy. I know. How does she not miss her phone? 
Yeah, that's for like days. Yeah, exactly, honey. <laughs> like if I if I don't have my phone for an hour, I'm freaking out. She hasn't had it for days, and and not worried. Like, her, what about her mother? I know who lives like that. Especially in the midst of all this drama, exactly. you not have a phone. And your brother just died, and you're not calling your mama. I, I just feel like there's something going on there, something weird. I, I, I just don't get it. So, with all that being said, the takeover happens. The family's fighting about it in the uh, oh, that in was the great. office. That was great. Bobby comes in, and you know everybody's you know all riled up. Mm-hmm. And John Ross has this little smirk on his face, and he's like, "No, no, calm down. You're not getting control of the company. I know about your little bride. That has nothing to do with that." And I like how he just kind of kept, you know, has this like, "Aha!" Kind of like, "What?" <laughs> and it's like, "Well, what's all this all about?" And then all of it unfolds, and then out of the blue, we hear Hunter McKay has controlling it share, like owns the company, has controlling interests of the company. Which I didn't know that that's what they were going to do. I knew that that was going to play into something mm-hmm. else. But I automatically thought the whole time would be Cliff and then Nicholas is behind it. And then that in the cartel. But I didn't know Hunter McKay was going to play. I thought we had saw kind of like the last part, last of him. Well, when they when when John Ross met him at the club and we saw that the two that Nicholas and him were working together, yeah. I figured it was something like that. But I thought it might be kind of like. Um, a half and half, but with Cliff owning the majority share. Yeah, but that it would be like the two of them. Yeah, and then the cartel would just take his part, or so. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. Absolutely did not I, see it playing out this way, where where both of them lost. Yeah, and I didn't know that's how in bed him and Nicholas were. No, I didn't realize. I, I mean, no. like, it's like they've been married for five years. <laughs> well, that's the only. I mean, without him, this plan would have never worked. No, it would have never, never, ever worked. So while this is all going on, Cal shows up, too. Oh, and then, oh, we can't, we can't have to mention the sh- uh, Sheik. Sharif oh, yeah. Ali. Get that text. John, yeah, yeah, gets a check. Because he's supposed to, that's the reason for John Ross going to Cal's for t- that giving him the 10 the t- million mm-hmm. was for the Sheik Sharif Ali. And so when that doesn't go down, John Ross gets a check. A- uh, text mm-hmm. saying you have failed this yet again. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. And then Cal shows up, tells him what's going on. All of a sudden, everything starts kind of coming together. Well, they start wondering, like, what does Hunter McKay have to do with any of this? Like, how yeah. I thought the feud with the family was over years ago. Like, this doesn't make any sense. And then Pamela comes in and throws it down how they had seen each other. Like, that she had they had seen them at the bar. Nicholas was hanging out with Hunter and, you know, is like yelling at John Ross. You got played. They played you. You know, all you were ever good at is lying and cheating. And you failed at that, too. Oh, one that of the was best, so brilliant. Best thing she said. Like, I think that's one of the best lines she's delivered, like, all like yeah. the whole series. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> so great. And she she slapped him. Right? She slapped him. Called yeah, him a selfish she bastard. <laughs> and then, of course, Chris steps up to him. I love when he just <laughs> just steps up to when him. They like buck at each other. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like the Broncos. But like, <laughs> so that's all going on now. Okay, then Cal walks in. They start talking about all of this of like, how would Hunter McKay? How does he have all this money? Mm-hmm. Christopher brings up Joaquin. Cal goes, well, the cartel is trying to legitimize themselves. With all these small venture companies. Yeah, with all these shell companies and everything. You know, one thing I'm very proud of Christopher, because he has his little brain going to find those, going to find those letters. And, you know, this all kind of stemmed from his research and just remembering. Yep. And really, you know, kind of doing, making his dad investigate. And I thought, you know, that was really great for him to step up and, you know, really take control of it in the right way. Yeah, and he I he wasn't whiny. He, no. He's actually been really good this season. No. He's really becoming a man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Way to step it up, Chris. Yeah, woohoo. <laughs> so like so he tells him about what then Chris calls Elena to tell her what's going on, but Nick has her phone. He's listening to the message and erases it. Yeah, and again, how does she not have her phone? I, that, that phone looks like an iPad, by the way. Yeah, that's a, that's a big phone. That's even bigger than my little galaxy that I got going over here. That ain't that little. So so now they, Barnes and Ewings lose everything, which is hysterical. Yeah, um, yeah, completely both of them gone. Yeah. Everything's gone. So the boys go and try to confront Hunter. 
Yeah. Well, first Nicholas, because Nicholas and Elena, she comes out to the front porch. She's like, well, obviously they have a TV. She must have saw what happened. It's yes. Like, she was watching the news. What yeah. happened? We promised. We did this. We promised Cliff we were going to get his. And Nicholas lies to her once again and says, we did everything. You did everything you were supposed to do. I did this. I promised to. And we did everything we were supposed to. How mm-hmm. are we supposed to know this was going to happen? Mm-hmm. I mean, he plays his part very well. Uh, you know, she eats it up. Yeah, so then that's when the boys go to see mm-hmm. Hunter McKay. They do. He taunts them. They fight a little. <sighs> that one. And it's always worse to be taunted by a geek. <laughs> no offense. And I know this sounds awful, but you, you know what it's like? And, you know, he's getting his comeuppance for a lot of things. He's made a lot, he's made a lot of money through gaming, and that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But for him to step into this ball game and to really just give it to the Ewings for... Mm -hmm. this family feud that has been supposedly squashed it's just even the worst well and the line that he tells john ross how does it feel it's it's poetic justice that you know the same like (gasps) nicholas didn't think you'd take the bait but then i reminded him of your dad doing the same thing when my grandfather uh, took uh, took ewing oil Mm -hmm. so here's the same you know it's just all comes full circle yeah and that's what really got set up, yeah. And set then off John Ross. Christopher had to break break up a fight. Mm-hmm. So he's not trying to fight his cousin this time. He's breaking up a fight with his cousin. So if, there's always some kind of fighting between them. So then um, that happens. Boys go there. Uh, Luis goes to talk to the head of the cartel. Mm-hmm. And as he's in the orchard picking tomatoes, <laughs> why <laughs> is it? Okay. Any cartel or mafioso <laughs> boss. Do you ever notice that? They're in a garden <laughs> picking tomatoes. It's like always. Or they're doing something that's so peaceful. Because they have all these people to do all of the, 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 the take care of all the drama. Oh. They don't have to deal with the drama. The dra- It gets handled by other people. They get to go be serene and paint and you know just yeah. live live life and be artistic and insightful and fl- you know <laughs> throw out all these <laughs> kind orders, of like- <laughs> not quite be responsible because their hands are not really on it so they can really go and like grow a crop of corn to go and be, be insightful happy. and you know give all this these messages about how drugs just ruin a society as they're laundering more and more of them <laughs> what did he say what did he say not since the europeans raped our country have we been in power Mm-hmm. So basically, his whole ideal di- idea is that they're now going to be in power. They're going to be powerful, and it's time for the Mexicans to take over. Right. That's what I got now. Luis and this man, I want to say they're family members. He really it makes it seem like that might be his father. It, and, and usually, I mean... That's kind of how it is. It's usually kind of like a, a family business. Yeah, right? which yeah. would make a lot of sense. So then they talk about Nicholas and, the, well, just the head of the cartel goes, oh, he did well and he'll be running Ewing Oil. And Luis tells him he lost $600 million. <laughs> He's like, eh, that was a mistake. Wow, you must have a lot of money to go. Well, and I'm wondering if that's going to be a feud there between Luis and Nicholas. Because oh, it seems that's like... Up. Like Nick or Luis wasn't really happy with that. But oh, he was a no. little bit kind of resentful toward that of him automatically assuming that Nicholas was going to run the company Once or having that again. faith in Nicholas after he lost all that money. Once again, Joaquin from the ghetto, <laughs> some other family took him in and he's now and now he became like a son. I'm, I'm going with he came family. And he goes, that's why he's smart. He has the financial sense. That's why I, yeah. I saw that in him. Well, let's not forget, too, and I just remembered this just now, is there somebody watching Nicholas? Oh, somebody yes. watching Nicholas and, Elena and taking, taking photos. pictures. Yeah, taking pictures of them together specifically. I'm telling. Okay, it's that's a wife. prediction. Yes, thank so you. So the wife. We're talking about the wife coming out. She, where has she been? She she's came in. Come back she because, was, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's going to play a bigger role. She has to. I'll be very surprised if she doesn't. Ah. <sighs> Vic- Ew. Victor, no, 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 oh. <laughs> not Victor. Luis and the wife, wife, and that's their father. Oh, maybe that would make a lot of sense. That, that could work because you that, know that whole compound that she yeah. lives in and all uh-huh. of that. I mean, that definitely makes sense. Yeah, that definitely for does. sure. 
Hmm, so now we'll come back to that. Yeah, that's an interesting one, and that's for prediction. Yeah. But Bobby goes. Bobby goes to see Tracy, and yes. I'm going to say Tracy McKay. I don't know Hunter's her, aunt. Yeah, Hunter's mm-hmm. aunt. Mm-hmm. And he tells him about his dealings, and tell, and she goes, "I thought this feud was over a long mm-hmm. time ago. I thought we squashed this. What's going? Everyone thinks they squash it. Obviously not. Yeah. And she tells Bobby, "You were always the hero." always good at being the hero you're always hero. you're always good at playing the hero mm-hmm. and i can see where this is setting it up mm-hmm. there there's trying to set something up between the two of them i see that but i will mm-hmm. we'll see i will see something's gonna happen mm-hmm. something's gonna happen there well there's obviously a history too yeah yes. they, yeah I, yeah yeah because he goes you could talk anybody into anything <laughs> remember when you used to play pool and the, no there's definitely a history with yeah. them and she even talks about how you know, her dad hated the Ewing so much that he raised his grandchildren to feel the same. Yes. And not even really understanding what the whole feud was. They just kind of grew up with this hatred, hence the reason why this is all unfolding like this now. Exactly. And that's so. where the sad, that's the sad part about it. So mm-hmm. before we get into more about them, John Ross. <laughs> oh, John. And I, everyone's going to someone else to try to figure this out exactly. and try to get help. Bobby's going to see Tracy. The boys go see Hunter. And now John Ross goes to another unlikely person to try to become an ally. So he goes to see Emma, but she's with the whole family. <laughs> and he goes, where are y'all going together? Let me guess. Family therapy? <laughs> Amazing. Great. Amazing. And so she Judith sends Rylan and Emma to the car. Mm-hmm. Right? And guess in John Ross's face. Oh, she's so good. Did you so write any close. Of the stuff that she wrote? Because she was like it is just a warm it's just a, okay, no, that's that's when that's she got after, into the car. That's yeah, after. that's when she got but she just oh, she asked him if he wants a job. Yeah, I'm so sorry you lost your company. <laughs> oh, so sorry you lost your company. If you're looking for a job, how good are you at, at what did she say? How good at something, the company of men? Yeah, uh, being the pleasure <laughs> of the company of men. Or yeah, something, something like, that. like that. And he just has like this like this little smirk on his face. It's like, just too mm-hmm. funny. And then he reminds her about Candace, mm-hmm. which he shouldn't have showed his hand like that. Well, that's all he has. Yeah, that's all he has. I mean, he really, I mean, at, at this point, he's yes. desperate. Like, that's all he has against them right now, legitimately. And he tells her, you know, if you want to keep breathing this clean air and not go to jail and all this. And she fights right back and she says, look, you know, I care about my granddaughter's safety. Do you really think I'm going to go and do this and put her life in danger? You're crazy. Now, I suggest you get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she's, oh, she's so brilliantly frightening mm-hmm. and amazing at the same time. Yeah. Those people I'm always in awe of. Yep. And Cause... then she gets in the car. I love it. She gets in the car. Just the warmth I needed. Let's go make a drug deal. <laughs> it's just the warmth I needed. I was like, well, there you go for a family outing. Some people Let's go, go to church. go make us a drug deal. And some people go to church. Others go to a drug deal. <laughs> Obviously, that's what they do. So then Tracy and Bobby go to Hunter's house. Once again, everyone's going somewhere. Yep. And they find him dead. He his doors have like yeah. open. Oh, yes, it's slightly open. And of course, as soon as you see the door slightly open, you know he's dead. Like yeah, yeah you know that's like almost a telltale. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, or and he hung himself as they th- is what it what it, it looks appears like. to be. But why would the door be open if he hung himself? Okay, that's not really smart because most people who are going to kill themselves, they're going to lock the door. They want to do it in the private so that no one can t- try to stop them. Right. If that's clearly what they want to exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. So then Chris... He just bought a company that he... there's That doesn't even make sense. Exactly. He finally got what he wanted. Why was he going to kill himself? Mm-hmm. You know? He finally got what he wanted. But... So, obviously... It, this look, you know, from what every, the, everyone knows is they automatically assume that this is a cartel's way of tying yeah. up loose ends. And, <coughs> you know, because, of course, it, it, there's no evidence of foul play. It absolutely looks like a suicide the same way that Drew's death did. I yeah. mean, they're good. They're good. They're good at what they do. Exactly. So. And then so Chris shows up there. Now he's worried about Elena. Once again, he calls Elena, leaves a message. Guess who listens to it? Yep. Joaquin. And it erases it 
right there. It, he's getting creepier and creepier as this storyline goes on, which is great because he needs to become creepy and frightening and despicable in ways. Mm-hmm. And he's really doing it right now. Yeah. And so that happens. So the <laughs> Bum, and I just wrote, Bum just knows everything. <laughs> that's that's my so nose after So after Judith leaves and tells John Ross to go back to the pit of broken marriages you call South Fork... <laughs> Which is one of my favorite quotes of the night. <laughs> I uh, mean, one of my favorite quotes <laughs> ever, except Mama like. But I mean, like <laughs> and how true is that? Yeah. It, oh, my God. There's so many broken just marriages in the, there. Just in the new series, there's already like three broken marriages oh there. Oh, my God. There's so many. <laughs> but he calls Bum and tells him to go find Candace. And as the family heads off to make the drug deal and Judith is, Judith is with the cartel yes. and trying to renegotiate Emma's mistake and her deal with them is, is find Candace. And she goes, where's my wayward whore? Yeah. Go find her <laughs> and I will up the... The 25%. The 25%. Mm-hmm. So that's happening there while Bum's looking for Candace, which he can't find her. But he finds something better, which is which is a little scary to have John Ross have this information. Oh, because that can just that's going to just blow everything out of the water. That's the worst because see, John Ross is not like Bobby. John Ross is not like it's Anne. almost as bad as having Judith know. Yes, yes. Or may or, I don't know. Maybe it's I don't know. No, because either well, at least John Ross has a little bit, a little bit more more morals than Judith. Maybe. Yeah. He just lost his company. I don't know. So he'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. Well, Bum figures out that little flash drive that they swiped from Ryland many episodes ago is encrypted with software that only the CIA uses. So they're putting all of this together. He's going to go try to crack it. Yeah. And he goes, you don't need her. This is even better. Yeah. And so they're like, okay. So forget Candace. Now they have a new... A new bomb, as he calls it. He wants to figure out what it is before he sets it off. So at least he's doing that. He wants to kind yeah. of see what see what he's got to work with before he, you know, kind of goes full force Which with it. Which is smart. And I'm happy that he's he's making a decision without... He's, he's going to do some research. Because John Ross is really not known for uh, taking the time. Well, after all that's happened and all the mistakes he's made that got them to this Mm -hmm. point that he kind of helped, you know, get them to where they are right now, he kind of has no choice but to kind of take a beat and really look at what he's doing before he gets himself in deeper. Yeah. Hopefully he'll do that, but he is a little bit reckless, so we'll see. We'll see if this has kind of taught him a lesson in any way, shape, or form at all. Exactly. Or if he's just going to fall into old patterns. So now we show up at Ryland's family house and judith is sitting there drinking on some scotch am i did i go yeah i think that's yeah no that's right and oh uh, let's just hop back real quick because it's going to make sense now but while you know as we talked about earlier that um ann went to go talk to emma about everything going on with ryland at the end of it you know she hugs her tells her she loves her and then emma did something kind of out of character where she asked and to go to dinner yes so they're kind of trying to reconnect and talk more and kind of deal with all of this because i think it was a pretty big blow to emma to know that you know her anger and her you know kind of bratty attitude kind of got her and self in some real danger and i think she's legitimately scared yeah she's like what am i gonna do what am i gonna do yeah now? well louise shows up at the house so emma's not there so we yeah, can only yeah, assume yeah. that she's with, with Anne, Anne having, having dinner, dinner. Yeah. okay and louise shows up and I like how she's like, Rowland, who's at the door? <laughs> <laughs> Louise shows up with a beautiful gift wrap box. Yes. A box with a beautiful bow. Anytime you get a box from a cartel member, I don't know if you necessarily want to open it. <laughs> well, and she does, and it's Candace's hands. <laughs> yes, it is. But she doesn't really flinch at that. She kind of a little. But a very, little. very, you have, to, you have to really pay attention. She very slightly does yeah. it. But it, but she plays it off very very yeah, well. Yeah, she's because she's so good. Yeah, she hardly ever loses her cool until the next moment. Yeah, because he they he goes oh I want to show you I did but also to see to make sure that you 
follow up on your deal and he op- has a computer opens it up and there's Anne and Emma tied it- up in a garage looking place it looks like the same place they had Drew a while ago remember yes. when they beat him up mm-hmm. mm. so and he goes and what you're gonna do is you're gonna double it up you're gonna mm-hmm. double up not 25% you're gonna double up what the product and you're gonna do what I say or they're dead yep wow. and that's where we're left we're left with this kind of Emma and Anne's life at stake here. We already know the CIA isn't going to do it. They're not going to allow no. that to happen. They're not going to... They're going to infiltrate the trucks if they see them. So yeah. there's going to be no safe passage there. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of what happens from here because there's, there's no way that Rylan cannot enlist Bobby for help. I mean, they have to. They, yeah. They're going to have to come together as allies to figure out how to get these women out of there or how to get them safe and... and kind of at the same time trying to get the evidence they need to get their company back it's going to be i mean it's just going to be so nuts well it all intertwines too yeah which is which is good and this is what dallas does so well like even last year with you know jr being the demise of jr Mm -hmm. they they always intertwine everything so well together That you think these stories are not anywhere near each other, and towards the end, they all come together. Yeah, it all comes together just just so neatly. Yeah. how every little piece, even if you don't understand why it's happening as it's happening, it all makes sense in the end. Yes. So I'm, we were talking about this when we were in watching together, and that's the, the great thing that we do. You know, we watch it, and we come in here, and we can talk about it, and... And we sometimes get very emotional about it and stuff. <laughs> we're, when we saw Anne and Emma, we were like, whoa, didn't see that. You know, it just it's and we were talking in there. How are they going to do this? They have to they have to get these two men to actually work together. And this is the perfect way to do it. Oh, absolutely. And then from what we see from the previews, there's definitely going to be, you know, we see Bobby with the bag on his head. We see Luis with Emma and somewhere else. So there's definitely going to be a struggle. There's going to be a fight they're going to you know something big is about to happen yes and i mean we're kind of led to believe that maybe emma you know could you know may not make it the next episode and you know all of that but you know it's 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 all it's all gonna be good yeah it's all gonna be great and with that being said do you have any predictions oh my gosh Ooh, is that a new prediction (laughs) Because I kind of liked it. I was like, wow. And now. I always like a big drum roll. I know, a big drum roll. All right, so I totally think the wife is going to come back. Nicholas's wife, the mother of his children, I believe she's going to come back and somehow save, not, you know, not fully save the day, but she's going to kind of calm things down a little. Like, I think that's one of, like, one hand they haven't played yet that I hope Christopher remembers. Yeah. Because the wife is never going to let her husband go. We we know that already. And she's told him as much. Yeah. I'm not and letting him go. And then she disappeared for a while. So there, she has to be coming back in some way, shape, or form. Exactly. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Like, I, I definitely see that. Now, as far as, you know, seeing Bobby with a bag on his head... Maybe he goes in exchange for Anne. Hey, th- that could be. That is a ooh. That he goes be. in ex- because Bobby would be more leverage than Anne would ever be. Mm-hmm. And to do a trade off, but I don't know if the cartel would even let that happen. I don't know. There's so many way. There's so many ways that it could go. Basically, they just want their drugs. Yeah. And then, so, but then John Ross with this new CIA information, I feel like he's just going to come and just kind of like start setting off bombs everywhere and just mess it all up. Which <laughs> just because yeah. he doesn't know any better for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust him with any information because he does things like this. Exactly. So. Yes, because he still hasn't learned his lesson. <laughs> he still hasn't learned. I think Christopher's going to save the day with Elena. Cause Somebody's got to find her and get that girl her phone. Yeah, because, girl, you in trouble. <laughs> but it's true. I, I just, I can't believe they were writing her so well, then all of a sudden, she doesn't have her phone. Uh, yeah. And now, and, you know, I just don't get it. I, 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 that's the one problem I have with this whole episode. Is how does this girl... Well, maybe up? Nicholas cloned it. Let's just go. Maybe she, maybe she's not that reckless, and maybe she does have her phone, and Nicholas just cloned it. Oh, and I just thought of something. Uh. This would have to make Rylan 
Cliff Barnes and Bobby actually have to. Yes. <gasps> All, All three together. families would have to come together to do this. How insane. Oh, that's brilliant. Totally brilliant. Dallas amazing i'm not gonna tell you my other prediction because i say it every week so we don't need to put it out there but yeah it was great um we do have a guest next week yes. as far as i know very very excited it looks like we are gonna have uh, do we want to say mm, uh, <laughs> no we'll tweet it out all right we'll so stay tuned out. for that so i'm very excited because i i have a few questions already oh yeah for, yeah for sure yeah for sure I'm very, very excited. And, yeah, you know, we just really enjoy everything. Oh, JT, thank you for over there. We never really thank our producers <laughs> or anything, and I always feel awful. But we just want to thank our viewers and the people who listen to us because they're always so great, and they give us great feedback. And I love the clips that you all send. Oh, from the from the first original series. Yes. And it's so great. And, you know, I was reading some of the iTunes comments today, and, and thanks again for all of your, you know, your, your the five-star ratings and all that. It's really, really great. And, you know, I did used to watch the show back in the day with my mom, and I it, it's one of those that you absolutely have to go back and rewatch because yes. there's so many things like I definitely know that there's a history with Tracy and the McKays and all of that and I just can't remember what it is off the top of my head but um, so we definitely have to go back and do that but there's just I mean even with last week's episode and, and this week with all the little things that are yes. happening here I mean you go back and you watch the old ones and it's the same so yep. many facets to each and every story that it's just fantastic so, so we really appreciate all the support and everything and definitely like you know Leave comments and, and tweet us what you think and, and all that. And make sure to use the hashtag DallasABTV because we love to read that stuff. Exactly. And I still want hashtag Holy Diaphragm <laughs> to become something. <laughs> We're going to get Holy Diaphragm <laughs> trending. Exactly. Tonight. Tonight. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> but anyway, but once again, guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, Kelly, where can we find you? Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Kelly with an IE079. Okay, perfect. And you can find me at Twitter at Lula Cherry Films and on Instagram, Dorinda B1. And you can follow AfterBuzz at AfterBuzz TV on all of the social media channels. And don't forget, hashtag Dallas ABTV. Exactly. Thanks, you guys, for hanging out. We'll see you next week with a full panel and a special guest. Exactly. Boom. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz y'all later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.